Time for a quick tutorial on how to convert raw files into JPEG using Lightroom and Picasa. And we're also going to talk about how you convert raw files into TIFF files using just Lightroom. Before we get started, I just want to level set on a couple of things to begin with. It's late at night and I am fighting a cold and I do have some medication in me. So I'm gonna do my best to stay on point here. Um, the other thing is that this video is intended for someone who has taken a lot of raw images and you're not quite sure what to do with them. I mean, maybe you inadvertently took the raw images or someone advised you that yes, raw is the best way to go, so shoot with raw. And in the end, you find yourself lost and confused that you have these raw images and you thought you could just post them up to Facebook or share them and it's not working. So you might be thinking, okay, what do I do? How do I get these things back to JPEG? So first, I want you to understand that if you have a raw image, the benefit to raw is that it's meant to be processed, to be post-processed. So you should take a raw image and pull it into a utility such as Lightroom and process it. Modify it, correct it, enhance it, do what you want to do with it. But if you are saying, whoa, 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 whoa wait a second, I didn't sign up for that. Um, I just want a easy to use picture and I want that JPEG and how do I get my raws to JPEG? We're going to cover that and I'm going to do so right out of the gate. And then I'm going to spend some time providing some additional information um, that may kind of help clear up the RAW and the JPEG and the file sizes and all that good stuff. So, just to stay on point, let's just jump right in. I'm in Lightroom and what we have right here are some pictures. I just took these. Okay, so I took these for demo purposes and I used my Sony A6000 to do it and it was set to capture JPEG and RAW at the same time. So a lot of cameras can do that and it's kind of helpful to do it. I don't always do RAW and JPEG. Um, you know, more often than not, I'll do one or the other, but in this case, we got them both. So, um, again, staying on point, this is my raw file. I can tell it by looking down here at the extension DNG. Now, if you're relatively new to raw and you see a different extension, don't worry about it because if you're using a Nikon, a Canon or a Sony, they're all going to have different extensions. Keep in mind the DNG is a digital negative format. It's kind of like a generic raw file format. It's lossless, meaning that you're not going to lose any information when you convert it to a DNG. Again, I want to stay on point with what this video is about and let's, uh, let's just keep on moving. So I'm going to highlight my raw files. Now there's some other raws over here. I'm just going to stay with three for the sake of this demonstration. Once I highlighted the raw files, I can come down here and click on export, or I can just right click on any of these selected files, hover over export, and click export. Now there's a handful of sections over here, and again, to stay on point, I'm just going to focus on what I'm going to consider are three critical uh, sections to look at. First one, export location. You're going to click on this because you need to know where your files are going. So take a look at this and set your location. I have mine set already, so I'm going to move on. File naming. Uh, now, I think by default it's set at file name, which this is fine if you're using raw files because it'll append the extension JPG or TIF, uh, and I'll show you where that's set down here. But um, in my case, I have a directory that contains both JPEG and raw, so I'm going to throw a sequence number on it, and I'll start it with 100. Okay, the third section I want you to really pay attention to is file setting. This is where you get to select JPEG or TIFF. Okay, so I'm going to use just a quick minute or two and address the difference between a JPEG and a TIFF. Now, TIFF is going to be your best file format for extremely large prints, like a high quality print, uh, maybe corporate prints, things like that. It is a lossless container file. Okay, so the best way to use a TIFF is if you're coming off of a raw file. So if you have a raw file and you make corrections to it and you're gonna do a corporate kind of print with it, and I'm not talking like you wanna print an eight by 10 or 
11 by 14 and hanging on a wall. I'm talking like a poster size print. Go with TIFF. Um, you could definitely print from JPEGs. I do it. A lot of people do it. It's fine. But if I have a large print, I'm going with TIFF. So um, now we could dive into a lot more detail on TIFF. I'll save it for another video. If, if, uh, if you want that, just let me know. Again, you know, post a comment on it. Um, but you could store, you could actually export a JPEG into a TIFF and it's not going to help a whole lot. Um, again, I'll save that for another video, but let's just stay on point here. And this is the option though. If you wanted to export a TIFF, you could do so right here. But uh, right now we're just going to stay with JPEG. So I select JPEG, move my quality uh, indicator all the way to 100 and select the color space of standard RGB is fine. And that's about it. So there's some other options in here that we can get into, but we'll save that again for another video if, if, uh, if, if it's desired. So at this point, I'm going to hit export. And you'll notice in the upper left hand corner, this is the status indicator as it starts to export these files. And you can see the file name happening right here. It's just going to take five or 10 seconds and it's done. Let's go take a look inside this directory and see our files. So here we are. And you'll see the files right here and here and here. Now what I want you to know, I'm going to talk about this for just a minute, is that these three files are all related. These ones that are highlighted, you'll see them right here. And let's, I want you to take a look at the file size. So this is the raw file right here, 25 meg just over. Here is the JPEG that came straight from the camera, just over 4 meg. And here is the JPEG that we just produced from Lightroom at just 14.7 uh, meg. So you might look at this and go, well, these two are JPEGs. Why are they so far apart? This one is what your camera produced. And it took just the information that it wanted to render into its final image and it threw everything else out. This right here is everything that the sensor captures. This is that raw file. So we produced a JPEG from our raw file uh, using the highest possible quality from Lightroom and it still saved a lot of information and produced our JPEG. Now this file right here, it's ready to be shared. You could send this up to Facebook uh, anywhere you want. And so um, now you want to take a look at it. I'm just going to double click. You look at this file. We haven't touched it. Um, does it look okay? Yeah, I think it looks okay. I'm not sure how well you'll see it on the video, but there is some noise here and it definitely needs a little bit of sharpening. Uh, the focus was on the eye right here, but um, you can see it just needs a little bit of sharpening. And keeping in mind that this is unprocessed, so the camera did not process this at all. Uh, this is just raw. That's what it is. That's what it looks like. So we just covered how to use Lightroom to convert raw file into JPEG. And what I want to do is you're probably looking at this going, well, hang on a second. I don't have Lightroom or I don't want to uh, shell out the cash for it. What's another option? And that's where Picasa comes in. Okay, so here's Picasa. If you're not familiar with Picasa, um, go to picasa.google.com. You can download it, install it. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, not too difficult, and it's free. Keep in mind, Google is stopping support of Picasa, but the tool will remain available and uh, there's a group of developers that's pushing Google to see if uh, they can release the code, so make it open source. And um, I've developed for many years in my career, so I would like to get my hands on that as well, but we'll see. Nonetheless, um, what we have here, I've highlighted the raw files. So again, these are the JPEG counterparts. Can you modify the raw file in Picasa? Well, right here, I made this one black and white. I can simply undo it. You'll see the color return. I'm going to go ahead and return that to black and white. You can see just how easy that is. Let's go ahead and uh, just leave the black and white off. Let's go back to our library. And I'm going to go ahead and select our three raw files and we're going to export. And uh, you can see the export location right here. You don't have as many options in here, obviously. You've, um, you've got the image size. You want to use the original size image quality, use maximum, and that's about it. Add a watermark if you want, whatever. I'm going to go ahead and export. You'll see the status indicator in the bottom right hand corner. When this is done, this is going to open up the directory, and I'm going to show you something interesting, and this is going to lead into another quick uh, notable point. So 
it created this directory right here. And let's go ahead and take a look at it. Okay, so you'll see the three files right here. And take note of this one, 1384. So look at the file size, it's 8.6 meg. Now I'm gonna go up a directory and we're gonna look at the JPEG that Lightroom created. Now remember, 1384, file size is 8.6 meg. 1384, file size is 14.7. Now, you might be looking at this going, ah, uh, I'm lost and how does that happen? Keep in mind that both JPEGs they originated from the same raw file. So, this is the big asterisk next to Picasa. Picasa does not truly deal with the original raw file. It allows you to see it and to view it, but in order to make that happen, Picasa actually dummies down the file to 8-bit. So, if your raw file is 12-bit, 14-bit, it cuts out a lot of information, brings it down to 8-bit, and that's how it manages and manipulates that raw file. So what's happening here is that Lightroom deals with the original raw file and generates this JPEG at 14.7. Picasa dealt with that original raw file and generated a JPEG at 8.6. So you can see it actually loses quite a bit of information. So you might be thinking, well, how does this look? Well, I'm gonna double click and there's our file. So when you look at it, you think, well, how does that look? I, I think it looks okay. It looks similar to the other JPEG. Um, I don't know how well you'll be able to pick up on it, but it looks like we might have some additional noise caught up over here in this area. Um, and again, that's viewable to the naked eye. I'm not like really having to zoom in to 100% and really get crazy with it. I can just see it as I'm looking at it. So, you know, um, again, it's a raw file that's meant to be processed. This is unprocessed for the most part, except for what Picasa did to it. And we have an image, though, that we can share. This is our final image. It's a JPEG image. So what we've done right now is we have talked about how to use Lightroom, select your raw files, and export to JPEG. And we did that. Uh, we talked about Picasa, how you can select your raw files here and export to JPEG. We talked about the limitations of Picasa that it doesn't truly generate the JPEG from the original raw file, and that's the reason why the file size is a little smaller, although Picasa is a free alternative, and it does generate a file that you can still use and post to Facebook and do all kinds of stuff with. So, I hope this video helped you out, and if you liked it, be sure to give it a thumbs up, leave me any questions that you might have in the comments below, and I'll do my best to answer them, and if you like, if you'd like me to create some uh, additional videos on Lightroom or Picasa and tips and tricks and things of that nature, just let me know that as well. And uh, I may go down that path because there's a lot to be said about raw files and manipulating them and what you can do with them. And there's a lot to be said about the power of Lightroom. So with all that said, give this video a thumbs up. And uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. It's called The Real World. You never know what you might get. Um, I mainly post videos on photography and technology. Technology is really my space, but I also post videos on automotive maintenance and home ownership. Uh, just whatever, whatever happens in the real world, that's that's what I'm gonna that's what I'm gonna put out. So, um, yeah. So hopefully this helped you out. And until the next video, take care of yourself and be safe. <music>